Hello there, Idru here. Today we're going to be covering off some of the options and abilities that you have available with the in-game interface and game options. The first thing we're going to be covering off is the options for the gameplay. We go into the main menu and then go into options and gameplay. First top sections are in regards to the text language, auto language, subtitles and the size of the subtitles and the ability to turn off the free camera so that's rotating the camera freely. First one that we're going to be covering off is this one, increased camera distance which is defaulted to off. Now at a small cost of some performance you can actually turn this on and what this allows you to do is to increase the default max zoom out from around this distance all the way out here which is really useful for taking in the wider scope of your islands I'd highly recommend turning that on the next thing we're going to have a look at is the right click radio menu the circle menu that pops up that gives you the option for crafting roads and houses whenever you right click if that's something that gets on your nerves you actually have the options to turn that off in the gameplay options as well that is here The next thing we're going to be covering off are the little pop-up menus that pop up at the side. Whenever you do something that the AI don't like, or whether an expedition is available, or whenever a newspaper becomes available, you'll have the pop-up menu at the side and the audio prompt that uh, plays the text. You can actually turn those on to hide them. The next two are purely for a multiplayer side of things. That's for turning the chat notifications on or off and being able to show or ping a position on the map to one of your friends when you're playing in multiplayer. The next one is a brand new one that's came in recently and that's turning the electricity poles off. Which some people like to actually have us so they can see the roads clearer. Also it can actually have a slight increase to performance if you turn this off. And obviously defaulted on for edge scrolling so that allows you to move your map to the side and it moves over to the side. And you can also now, with Game Update 9, you have the ability that whenever a visitor comes through your public pier, you get a prompt up in the window. It gives you the name and their stats and the option to accept or deny. There's no reason not to accept them all. So you actually have an option to turn on and accept all visitors. So you won't get the prompt, you'll just get a notification of who turned up and then it'll disappear in a couple of seconds. You also have the option for irrigation building mode. What this does allows you to specify that any agricultural crops that you try to create in the Land of Lions DLC, the crop plot will not be placed on non-irrigated land. So you can highlight a huge area and it will only place the actual crops on irrigated land. So you can just drag and select a whole area and it will only place wherever hydration is. Next we're going to be covering off some of the things you can do with the main menu here. So by default the game is set up to have construction as blueprint mode off that constructs everything but you can if you prefer to have things blueprinted this allows you to just sketch out where buildings are going to go without actually constructing them and allowing you to upgrade them later on you can turn that on so it just automatically constructs without blueprint mode now down at the bottom it's defaulted to have the construction options to be set via the working classification so farmers workers artisans engineers investors and scholars that is not the only option we have here if you want you can actually change this to building type you can actually change it to construction materials city consumables harbors and cultural so if you prefer to have your sorting of your construction items this way around have that option as well also at the top if there is something you use quite regularly you can actually drag the item into the hotbar and it'll actually save that. The fire 
is out of control. The next thing we're going to cover off is the minimap. And on the minimap, you'll actually have, when you hover over an island, it'll tell you what minerals are available on the island and the actual fertilization that's available. Now, on a big island, or if you're struggling to find where some of your oil springs or wherever you, where your mines are, you can actually click on the actual resource type for the minerals, and it'll actually jump you around each of the locations of where they are. So if you're trying to find if something's blown up, or you're trying to find if you've missed a mine somewhere, or an oil spot that you've not put something down on, you can click on these down here. Right, okay, so the game update 9, we have another ability that has been proven very useful. At the top, it used to specify up here the monitoring items of wood, bricks, steel beams, windows, and reinforced concrete. You now have the option to change all of these to specific items, and this will be applied to each individual island. So each island can have their own items that are being monitored. For this island, I have scars, coffee, chocolate, and some planks and bricks. Whereas if I have a look at an island that's just doing peppers, I can click up here and specify the resource. And now I'm monitoring peppers here. And this island over here that has my hops on it, we're monitoring hops. So you can actually bind each island to monitor specific items. Very useful to keep on monitoring things and not having to go into the warehouse on each island and manually checking everything. Continuing with the upper section of the UI, we have up here the relative speed of the game. It can be paused, it's running at regular speed by default, or you can run it slightly faster or running at triple speed. Click on these up here, or if you prefer, you can actually click the plus negative on the keypad on the right of your keyboard, or rebind it to a specific set of different keys as well if you prefer. The next thing that I recommend people doing as well is up here. The name of the island. You can actually click up here and you can actually change the name of the island. You can actually specify if you want themes of island names or if you want to to help with keeping track of what island is doing what for production. You can actually name it to the production type over here. You can have it down as being Hop Island 1. Then when you look in your trade routes you'll see the abbreviation of the island names here. You can actually figure out which island this is coming from straight away nice and easily. Next thing we're going to cover off is the attractiveness of the current island you're over. This changes per island, but if you want an actual breakdown of how you actually get into that level of attractiveness, you can click on the actual icon and it will tell you here where you're actually getting your positives and negatives from read the total here. And if you want an actual breakdown of how it's getting to these numbers, if you click on them, it will give you a breakdown of exactly where these points are actually being generated from. So on the negatives, these are the things you want, might want to look at if you want to reduce that. Let's think. Up here we have our total population up here. And the current breakdown. Now we also have over here current income per minute and the total balance. If you have hover over here is the breakdown of where your actually money is coming in from and where it's actually going out through the most. This allows you to figure out where you're making the most money and where you're spending it most. In case you want to adjust how much money you're spending on certain things, get rid of certain ships or visitors or if you want to increase the number of investors or decrease the number of farmers because they're not making enough money that gives you an idea of where the money's coming from and going to however 
you want to check on an individual island or a group of islands with commuter pairs, in the central section over here on the left, if you hover over the portrait here, it'll actually give you the breakdown on this particular island or islands that are shared through a commuter pair. Here is the influence points. This is how we're actually getting influence from population. When you get to investors, you'll be generating influence from the investors. And I'm actually getting influence points from cultural sets from the museums and zoos. It gives me a total there of 5,083. I have 34 available. And the next population unlock to receive another 12 influence is at 286,000. However, you want an exact breakdown of where your influence is being spent. If you click on here, it'll give you a breakdown of where the influence is coming from. And with the attractiveness, if you want a further breakdown, you can click on here, and it gives you an exact breakdown of where you're actually spending your influence. If you want to get some back and you've got lots in trade unions, it might be you want to start adjusting that. Or if you have lots of military ships and you're not doing much military, maybe you want to get rid of some of those. The next thing we're going to be looking at, which is the buffs from influence points. So I'm actually currently getting 200 working force extra per island. That is for workers, farmers, workers, farmers, artisans and engineers. That is for every single island. Click on the tab down here. The points we actually have invested into each of these categories allows us to slowly progress through these four tier unlocks. See the first tier where a certain number of influence points used into expansion would have got me 50 points of working force per island. The next tier would have been 100 and the final tier is 200. So if you are running short on certain things you can actually gauge on how many more extra influence points you actually need to spend like here. To reach full unlock it's 300 influence points. And these are the sorts of buffs you can get. Okay, so next we're going to be covering off how to change the appearance of your houses and which way they're facing. Pretty simple. If you don't like how a house looks, you highlight the building and do Shift V. It cycles you through all the options for skins that are available for this housing category. You can do this for all the actual housing groups. Once you've actually selected the house skin you like, you can actually rotate it as well. So let's select the engineer house again and use the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard or the comma and full stop. You can actually now rotate the actual housing. If you don't want to change the orientation of how your city looks completely, you can do. Next we're going to be covering off how to use hotkeys for selecting your ships. So you can actually bind a ship or groups of ships to different hotkeys with control and 1 all the way through to 0 on the keyboard. We select this ship and do control 1. That ship is now bound to group 1. And if we go over here and we select this ship and do control 2. Now bound that ship to group 2. You can do this with groups as well. So now when you press 1, what will happen is it will select that first ship. That is back at the main base. If we press one again, it'll jump us to that ship. So if we can actually select ship two, so we can see what's on the cargo, and press two again, jump straight to it. And that is control one, all the way through to zero. The nice thing is if you have islands that you constantly are jumping around, you can actually bind specific locations. 
So if I want to have a camera lock on my industrial area over here, I can use Control F5 all the way through to Control F10. See over here. Control F5 all the way through to F10. Now let's bind this Control F5, and then we're going to bind this area over here. We'll Control F6. So now we can do F5. Six, and it jumps us to specific locations. If you want to freely jump around the game session, so from the old world to the new world, the Arctic to the land of lines, rather than using the game map, you can actually use one, two, three, four, and five on the keypad on the right of your keyboard. So if we want to jump back to the old world, one, we want to go straight to the new world, two, and so forth. Okay, so the last section we're going to be covering off is the notifications on the left hand side of the screen. Over here you'll have the quest book, you'll have your newspaper, you'll have your expeditions, and here there's a problem with one of my trade routes. You'll have all the notifications listed up here, and they keep popping up on the side here. However, some of these you might not want to actually be seeing all the time. If you want to customize the notifications you see, up here in the top left you have the filter notifications option. You can actually turn off and on ones you want to actually see. By default they will be all turned on, so if you don't want to see about trade routes, you can just turn the trade routes notifications off. You'll stop getting those pop-ups on the side. And you can do the exact same with the warnings. These warnings will be more critical things like uh, ship being destroyed, population shortage and stuff like that. If you don't want to see some of those things you can turn those off as well. And down on the mini-map we have a notification filter as well. This is where you can actually turn off quest markers, ships, enemy mines, diving spots, wind direction, harbors, players, you can turn off things you do and don't want to see. Have it completely customized to however you want. Hopefully this has been some use to people and helping them to customize and see the information they want to see and hide the bits of information that you don't want to see. If you did like the video, I would appreciate any uh, like on the video and any subscription. If you want to catch me live, you'll find me six days a week on average streaming for about eight hours on twitch at twitch.tv slash itru thank you very much see you next time